Well, hello, world out there. I'm Elder Felicia Wallace, and I am here at St. Stephen's Baptist Church, where our senior pastor is the Mid-Atlantic Regional Bishop, Bishop Lanier C. Twyman, and we are better known as SSBC, hashtag SS, we are SSBC. We are here with our 2020 vision and our 5G network. We are gifting, giving, going, growing, and glowing. We are here striving and thriving in the spirit of excellence, and we are here to make it better. We are here today to honor those of civic excellence for their dedication and for their service, their impact, and their influence in the community. And I am here today with Elder Sean Presley. Elder Sean Presley is over here at St. Stephen's Baptist Church, but he is also a retired police officer. So how are you doing today, Elder Presley? I'm doing pretty good. I'm watching yourself. I'm doing really good, really good. Um, thank you for um, giving us this interview today. I want to thank you for your past service. I want to thank you for putting your life on the line, and you are still here to tell about it, and we want to say that we appreciate you. Thank you. So we are here for the Blessing of the Badge event. This, uh, in these interviews are leading up to the event, which is October the 24th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. here at St. Stephen's Baptist Church. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Elder Sean. Yes, ma'am. Well, currently I'm the Minister of Music at St. Stephen's Baptist Church. Um, we're a retired county police, Prince George's County police officer. Um, and at the end of my career, actually, I had to retire because of a uh, motorcycle accident that happened off duty um, while I was a police officer. So uh, during my tenure with the Prince George County Police Office, Police Department, I served at the Bowie Police Station and the Lando, which was then the Barlow Road Police Station. Wow. And I spent my um, entire career in patrol. In patrol. So how was it? Um, being on patrol in in the neighborhoods that you were assigned to? Well, patrol in Prince George's County, you run all the you run all types of police calls. You run, you take theft reports, you take the uh, residential alarm reports, you uh, write tickets, you respond to domestics, you respond to homicides, you respond to everything that uh, the 911 call taker takes. Uh, patrol officers are responsible for you, responsible for uh, visibility, riding through areas, going through patrol, making sure areas are safe, making sure businesses are safe. So in Prince George County, you pretty much uh, run the whole gamut of police work. Wow. That's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. So and how are you mentally with all those different areas and calls and they, they, they pretty much train you for that? They, they train you for as much as they can. Um, there are some things that, in, just in life period, that um, only experience, experience in the moment, totally change your life. They can kind of prepare you in a, in a uh, clinical sense mm -hmm. of, of what they've been through, but until you had to go to your first homicide or your first death call or your first uh, fatal accident, and experience it for yourself, there's there's nothing that no one can tell you uh, or teach you uh, about those moments. And just in life in general, there's some people that they, they can prepare you for stuff and tell you about things, but until you actually go through those moments yourself, um, it, it's, it brings a different life and, and, it, and it'll change your life for the rest of your life. Wow. Do you think it make you more compassionate towards others? Um, help you with uh, like self control, motivation, or do it kind of take you to the other side? Well, some people it might, some people it might not. Um, I think foundationally, um, how you're raised and how you're brought up, and in, uh helps you filter different things you go through later on in life. Um, you know, I went to the Marine Corps before I went to the police department and 
you know, they, they, the thought was and the thing was, you know, boot camp will make you a man. And I think military, they, they say that, but my philosophy was I was really a man before I went there because some of things, some things, uh, my, my father taught me. Okay. Um, some things I learned. Now I learned, I got discipline and some other disciplines and I learned how to do things in the military, the military way. But, um, being a hard worker was already instilled from me in me through my parents. Okay. So, so that was just everything. Just things were added on in layers later on in life. So, um, so being compassionate, um, kind of goes in, in, in multi directions, uh, as a, as a police officer, because in some sense, I'm compassionate to the police officers mm -hmm. in some sense, I'm compassionate to, um, victims. Okay. Um, because I, I, you know, I battle with the fact where we talk about racial profiling, but when a department is patrolling a area that's almost a hundred percent white and you put a police officer, a white police officer in a hundred, almost a hundred percent black population, there is nobody else for him to stop. Right. There, there is nobody else driving at three o'clock in the morning with no tags on their cars or with lights out. Right. Except somebody that's in that community. So the only way you can almost stop racial profiling is putting white police officers in a white area. You know, so so I side with that, but I've also seen it where, you know, white police officers may target. But again, there's it's nobody else going to target if the only population that, it, that is in this patrol area is a black community. I get you on that. And I think again, as you said, it, some of it goes back to how you raised, yeah. um, what environment you was raised in, what you're taught and um, what you learned, what your moral and ethics um, that has been instilled in you. Um, being out in the world, can change that to a, a certain extent uh, as you grow and mature. Uh, but again, if you never leave your community or you never leave your city, you might, like you said, one population lives in this part of the city and one lives on that in that part of the city and you really don't come out of that environment. It, it can be a, a shocker. Yeah, and I say that as being a military wife, people that come um, into the military, um, their families and stuff, it, it, it can be a shocker because it's a totally different um, environment. Not saying that they don't have uh, issues with uh, profiling and things of, of, of that nature, but we are more, um, what's the word? We are more diverse. Um, than, than most um, cities. So while you were on patrol, how involved were you in the community and what kind of things were you involved in? Um, well, I guess fortunately for me at one point of the, my career, I, I grew up in PG County. Um, so I, I saw a police officer interact um, with the with the person that he was chasing as a young person. And at that point in time, I, I wanted to be a police officer. So I wanted to be a PG County police officer. So, um, you know, at, at throughout my, my growing up in junior high school and high school, um, and me wanting to be a police officer, I had to make certain correct decisions to make sure I live my life so I can be a police officer. Mm -hmm. So that, that meant not going out with certain people that meant not smoking marijuana, that meant not not following people going in the wrong directions. Mm -hmm. Because my goal was to wear that Prince George County police officer uniform. Um so once I once I became a police officer, um my my thought about well being about being a community. I wanted to, you know, some of us, most of us most police officers, they they become police officers to make a difference. Okay. They they want to make a difference. They want to make uh, changes. Um, 
because we see things, you know, in movies, sometimes we see an exploded view of crime and criminals. Mm -hmm. And then you have some people that want to grow up and be the criminals. And you have some people that want to uh, stop criminals and make a difference and, and um, prevent things from happening to seniors and kids and stuff like that. And th those were in, in my mind still to the day. Um, my, some of my pet things that really bother me is is elderly and kids. And then you have people that you know have other things that are things that's dear to them hearts. And that some of that is based upon again how you grew up. Right. Um, so so getting out of my car and talking to people and going going from store to store um, was things I do and, and those relationships that I built. In the community, at, them, at that point, I still have 30-something years later when I see people that I ran into years later that they still recognize from interactions we had by just stopping and helping people change the tire, stopping and uh, putting your lights on and help, helping people with flat tire, helping people in situations. Um, you know, I, I believe that interacting with a community is crucial. Right. Um, so... It was different things, and, I, and at some point, I was able to even patrol my own neighborhood that wow. I that I grew up in. And uh, you know, you have to, sometimes you have to make the hard decision and and do your job. Mm -hmm. um, but again, there 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 are things about being visible and being a police officer. And there's, there's been time I've played basketball on a basketball court with people, um, with little kids, and and and, um, and this was thirty something years ago. So those those things, and you still have police officers that will do that today because they, they do want to make a difference. Right. Um, the difference between officers that want to make a difference and people that's looking for a job. There's people, a difference. The people that want to make a difference take the time with their community, even if they're not community police officers. You have people that's looking for a job when they coming out of the military or coming out of other things, and they need they need a job, and the police department is available to them. Right. Um, so people that people that like that, that don't, you know, and I don't want to stereotype people, um, but people that don't have the make a difference attitude um, tend to veer away from what the goal of police department policing is, um, and it's not just to arrest people. Right. It's it's to be prevention. Right. To, to crime and, and reduce opportunities for stuff. Um, so I, I think those things make a difference. Yes, they do. They make a difference. You heard that right here. Policing is about community, building relationships, not only catching criminals, but being preventive and preventing crime from the onslaught. And so with that said, what does this event, Blessing of the Badges, mean for you? What what importance do you see in it? Well, I think it's, it's, it's commendable to take the time to say thank you to people, uh, to police officers and your first responders and your public safety officers, because they deal with um, a lot of things that the general public don't understand. Right. Um, you know, when they ride in a car up to a scene or to a house, there's a lot of things, a lot of scenarios that run in their mind mentally that they have to be prepared for. Um, that that you just don't, you never, they never know what they're walking into. Psychologically, over a amount of time, that has to play on your mind. Right. You know, it has to do, because you have to, you wear that. And you wear what you missed because like, man, this could have been worse. You take that home with you. Okay. So so commending people that lay their life on the line for the community every day um, is commendable. Th those guys and those women, they do this, especially uh, in the state of Maryland. Um, most police officers take their cars home with them. Mm -hmm. um, I was part of the personal patrol car, so mm -hmm. When I'm off duty and I'm in a police car, I'm still a police officer. Yeah. So if I if I see something, I have seen things off duty that I had to respond to that guys that was on the clock 
Um, you know, if I wasn't there, I wouldn't have prevented what happened or stopped those guys that was doing what they would have, whatever they were doing. So they are, they are 24 mm seven. -hmm. Um, and they lay their life on the line and they take things home with them. They wear a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff lay on them for years that in some cases that, you know, now they got platforms, they can talk about some of these things. But years ago, they didn't have these platforms where they could just share what's on their mind, what's on their hearts. Um, a lot of people um, just don't don't say thank you, or they right. do say say thank you, but they're looking for something in return. Right. Um, you know, you you know, some people will give them a free cup of coffee, but that's only because they want them their presence there. Okay. That is not really thank you. That's kind of an exchange. Right. You know, so taking a moment to say thank you for your service, we appreciate you. In a moment like this, where the where the situation between the police and community are more volatile mm -hmm. because of, of decisions that people have made is is very critical. And um and I think it's monumental for us to, just to take the time and Bishop Twyman and St. Stephen's to take the time and say, we thank you. If you're a fireman and you run into a house that's on fire mm -hmm. to save people, thank you. If you are a prison correction officer that you have to deal with, with murderers and rapists and, and thieves and burglars, and you watch these people and you keep them safe and you keep the community safe, thank you. And if you're yes. a police officer, that you do what you do every day, writing tickets, stopping speeding, stopping thieves, stopping murderers, thank you. And 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 we're not looking for nothing in return. And Bishop's right. not looking for nothing in return. We're just taking a moment just to say we thank you. And, right. we, would, and we thank you on behalf of the rest of the community. And, and here at St. Stephen's, we have, we've been a mediator in a lot of areas mm -hmm. where we say thank you and we help people um, on behalf of the other churches or on behalf of the community right. at large. So um, this thing, it, it, it speaks volumes and it means a lot to me, um, even having prior law enforcement experience. Well, there you have it. You heard the heart of Officer Sean Presley and St. Stephen's Baptist Church and Pastor Lanier C. Twyman, we are here as um, I say Elder Sean, but Elder Presley has said, we are in the community doing our part as well to help uh, foster the healing between the community and uh, the first responders. And so we need your help, we need your presence um, to um, be a part of this event on October the 24th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. on one of our social media sites at our website, ssbcmd.org, our Facebook page, St. Stephen Dot Baptist Church, our YouTube channel, SSBCMD Space Official, or you can watch it on Zoom. And our ID is 6. 05744940. So that's what we have. We encourage you to have watch parties to start competitions. It could be one law force agency against another, or one first responder against another, or church against church and family against family. Hey, treat it like football. We need to honor these servants of excellence in the communities in which they serve. And so we hope that you tune in with us. If you have any questions about the event, you can call the event founder at 908-912-4625, or you can email her. Her name is Kareen Campbell at icwcle at gmail.com, or you can contact the project coordinator, Ms. Tasha Arrington at T. A-S-Y-A-R-R-I-N-G-T-O-N at yahoo.com. We want to say thank you to Officer Sean Presley, one of our elders, mighty elder here at St. Stephen's Baptist Church. We thank you all out there in advance for your support, um, for your presence, and for your prayers. I'm Elder Felicia Wallace. I'm here with... Um, um, I want to say retired, retired. retired police officer, Elder Sean Presley. 
We are here signing off. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.